October 11th, 2012, 9.21 a.m. Hello, Laura. Tina's out of town in Vegas, work-related. I bought some sage yesterday on the way home and lit and spread it throughout the house several times. Last night after I lit the sage, my front door slammed open and shut, and my ADT security monitor went off saying, front door open. I went to bed around midnight, and when I woke up this morning prior to leaving the house, I noticed in the den on the lamp table, the Bible I had placed there months ago is missing. This Bible was put there by me when the haunting started back in July. It's gone and would have had to have disappeared last night while I slept because I saw it last night. Is there any way your deacon can tell me the significance of this or intervene on my behalf and get this looked at right away? I welcome any man, woman of God into my home that can help resolve this issue. Keith Linder By now, it's late summer, um, early fall 2012. And Bothell House. Uh, current residence is Keith Linder, uh, Tina Davis. Um, the phenomena that we're still experiencing um, has not showed signs of letting up. Um, but as far as poltergeist activity um, goes, um, and I know this now, I did not know this then. Um, we're still looking at a category one, category two poltergeist. Uh, the loud banging, the throwing of objects, missing objects, uh, footsteps, inexplicable sounds, um, electrical issues. Um, Tina will not stay in the house by herself when I travel on business. And as you just uh, heard, um, Tina, for the first time, uh, had to go out of town on business and I chose to stay. Uh, but one important factor or one important detail that I want the viewer uh, to understand or to know about this case uh, about us, about Keith and Tina, is we're now in the early stages of building our support system. Um, so we're a relatively small group of people um, um, and resources that we're going to try as a means of help, of seeking help. Um, our friends, those who attended the infamous housewarming party, knew of the phenomena, and now those who uh, attended the housewarming party and witnessed their own phenomena um, uh, have been drafted, if you will, into our support system. Seeing is believing. Um, Tina's going to have her uh, family and friends that she confides in, that she seeks help from, advice from. Uh, there's pros and cons to that. Same with me. Um, I'm going to be seeking advice uh, from friends and family, uh, from coworkers, from associates, on how we can, number one, rid the house of whatever this is. We still don't know. And if we can't rid it or get rid of it, can we lessen 
The goal is get rid of or lessen. I would like to get rid of. Uh, keep in mind, neither one of us know what's about to happen. This is just the precursor of the worst is yet to come. We're a long way from the worst is yet to come. But this activity, if it was to stop today, if this was to be the all of everything, meaning everything that we've experienced, if it was to end here, um, that would be fine. That would be, um, it would never reach the mass media as this case reached. It never would have become internationally known had the case or the activity stopped here. Uh, which means this is a low level still, uh, uh, medium level activity, Portuguese activity house uh, in the 21st century. Um, the days before the first Bible went missing, uh, I asked my assistant, my coworker, I'm a manager and I have an admin assistant, uh, who I've been keeping up to date on the activity in the house. Um, people that Tina talked to, people that I talked to, are believers. They know Keith and Tina are not making this up. And her advice to me was, and it was advice I'd heard before, never really got around to doing it yet, um, um, was to smudge or sage the house. Uh, I'm not familiar with the concept of smudging or saging, whatever terminology you use. Uh, what, what I've seen done and I've seen in movies, I know there's a, from what I've seen in movies, a belief that if you smudge or sage, it's supposed to rid your home uh, or your person of negative energy or spirits. So that's what was suggested. This is days before the Bible gone missing. Um, and she advised me to go to a, a, a botanical store, uh, I believe in Ballard. Ballard is a neighborhood in Seattle, um, sort of near downtown. But um, So I went to Ballard. I went to Ballard. I went to the botanical store on my way home. And... Uh, walked into this botanical store and I was advised by my assistant to try to get white sage, a sage stick or a white sage. Um, <laughs> lucky for me, the people who worked there immediately confronted me and asked me, hey, how can I help you? I told them, I didn't tell them about the house per se. I told them I'm looking for white sage and trying to get rid of some negative energy. And I think from beginning to end, I might have been in the store maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes tops. Um, just because I was blown away about the assorted variety of sage being present in this store. Um, so I purchased some uh, sage. Um, the lady in the store, I believe, also recommended, I think it's um, sweet grass. She says sweet grass typically works as well. So I bought that, uh, you know, why not? And uh, I was excited. I, I rushed home and I wanted to smudge right away. I did not download or go to Google uh, to see how do you smudge properly. I was pretty much told by the person in the store and by my co-worker. So it wasn't rocket science. Uh, Tina was not yet home. I wanted to go through, you know, a wave one of me smudging the house uh, from top to bottom with nobody present but myself. Uh, I later learned that's, that's pretty dangerous to do, to smudge by yourself when you're talking about something like a poltergeist. Uh, history tells us there's documentation of you can make the activity way worse. Um, all poltergeists don't respond positively 
too smudgy. Uh, but I didn't care. I didn't know. It was ignorance on my part, but I didn't know. I didn't care. I by myself. I knew what this. I don't know what I'm doing. And the poultry guys is going to take advantage of that. What was I? I was not expecting um, the reaction that I got. Um, as I'm smudging, I'm starting, I believe, in the farthest room to the house, which is the master bedroom, bathroom, and I'm just working my way from room to room. I'm going from all the bedrooms upstairs, bathroom, safe sick is lit, up and down, waving. I forgot what I was saying. I think I was saying something to the effect of get out of my house, leave my house today. You don't belong here. Um, please leave. Uh, and I was advised to be a little bit more firm in my asking, you know, get out of this house right now, leave today, stop it. Um, and I'm going from room to room. And if you're familiar with this house, if you see other videos of mine, you know, all the bedrooms are upstairs and there's a hallway and there's what it's called a landing. The landing, um, I would say, is at the base of the upstairs. You, know, you go from first floor to second floor. There's a midway landing, flat, seven or eight more steps. And there's the upstairs landing, which is the top base of the stairs. And there's bedrooms up to bedrooms up to bedrooms up to bathroom up to bedroom up to washroom, da 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 da. Once you stand on the landing, uh, there's a rail, little rail there. You can look over and see downstairs. You can see the front door. You're facing the street. You're facing, from the house technical standpoint, the living room. The living room is the first room you enter when you enter the house from the front door. And you can see all that from this landing. And I can't remember if what bedroom I was coming out of or if I was just strolling through the hallway waving my wave stick. And when I got to the landing, uh, my front door opened wide on its own. Opened wide and slammed shut. It didn't open wide and stay open. It just opened wide and then slammed shut. Now, it's not the wind. It's not the example you or me have experienced with wind blowing a door open and then shutting it, you know, some sort of vacuum, air suction. No, it's not that. Um, th that reaction or that when I, that, when I saw that, the open and slamming of the door, uh, it was a thunderous, it was me, I'm a big guy, we've all been mad. I think some of us, in our anger, we've slammed doors as we're leaving. I've slammed doors in my past, forcibly. Um, I couldn't have slammed the door that, that that forcibly. I could not have done that with no amount of anger. And truth be told, I was startled. I was scared because you have to keep in mind, gray lady, yeah, seeing that, touch light, cut, turn the lights off, go running, darting down the hallway, disappear, aha, uh -huh. gray lady, kid cough, hey, whatever, kid cough, lights going off and on, okay, um, objects being thrown, yeah, a little scary, a little bit unnerving, but up to now, nothing's been thrown our way, like in me or in Tina, the throne, you know, in your peripheral or behind you or over you. A um, little scary, but not, you know, earth shattering. It's discerning, uh, especially when you talk about a, 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 an iron, you know, that, 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 that becomes a projectile. That, that, that's a little scary. But um, this is more scarier than those things. This is more scarier than the loud bangs. This is more scarier than the fly pottery. 
Um, and I don't really know why, except to say the reason why this was scarier were the several reasons combined why I think this scared me more than anything else so far. Number one, I was alone in the house by myself. Or so I thought. Well, I know they're here, or why would I be selected? They're here, right? Um, but there's something in my psyche that still makes me believe, as much as we've seen and witnessed, at that very moment, I'm alone by myself, meaning not counting whatever entities are here. Tina's not here. I am by myself. Uh, that plays on you. Hollywood movies start to kick in and work on your psyche. You're like, uh oh, it's about to go down. Yeah, I shouldn't have done this. Um, Tina's gonna fall, come home and find me, you know, crucified on a wall or splattered somewhere. This is not good. That starts playing in the back of your mind. You can't control it. The other aspect that scared me was. What I was doing was I was getting a reaction. The door opening and slamming is them acknowledging that, hey, you, Keith, I would be very careful about doing that if I were you. I'll be very careful about smudging if I was you. This to me was them, their shot across the bow. You know, now back then, a part of me thought, Oh, that's the spirits leaving. Open the door, and they're out of here. They open the door, and shoo, close the door, and they're gone. Bam, they're out of here. Okay, a part of me did think that. It didn't make sense. Why slam the door? Why even go through it? Open the door. Don't you go through solid objects? Um, we'll later learn, yeah, they do. But why do you need to leave? Or why do you need to open the door to leave? And why the front door? So that kind of scared me, and as well as the sound and the vibration reverberating through the, old, the entire house as a result of the door slam. Uh, combine that all together and what my eyes witnessed and knowing the difference between the wind opening and closing the door and something invisible with, the, with a lot of force opening and closing a door. There was a lot of force involved to open and slam that door. Um, those who live with poltergeist, those who survive poltergeist will tell you, and those who study poltergeist who know what they're doing and know what they're talking about will tell you, there's no, there's no such thing as coincidence. You know, the door did not open and slam while I was in my office. The door did not open and slam. I was in, the, in my bedroom. They knew I was on the landing and I had total visibility to where if they was going to do something, now's the time to do it. And they did. The door opened and slammed shut. And a part of me took that message, took their shot across the bow, and um, I stopped. I stopped saving and smudging. All the smudging that day or that night, um, they took the sail out of my wind. They, they, what we call in, in, in my in my generation, they pumped me. I, I got pumped, and I do not feel embarrassed uh, to say that they pumped me. Um, whatever same thing I continued after that was just me hurrying half assing, and you, you cannot half ass saging or smudging. Can't. Uh, I was glad to be done because I was alone. Something opened up that door and, you know, you can't visually see it, but the brain fills in the blanks for you. So you're, when, it, with the, when the brain does a tally, how the brain works, of, of processing information, of data, and you take 
the door opening and slamming that forcibly. I couldn't do it if my life depended on it, that forceful. Or something else did. My subconscious, it tells my subconscious, and I know right then and there, that spiritually, emotionally, physically, I am not at the top of the food chain in my own house. There's a bigger force here. And if it looks like how it sounds, meaning how the door was slammed open and shut, if whatever did that looks anywhere close to how it sounded when that door slammed shut, we're in trouble. We are in trouble. And if you know about this case and how it ended or ended and what happens next down the line, then you know they were right. We are way over our heads.